Hey contractors, you probably already know how to get a review, but do you know how to leverage that review to get in front of more homeowners? Well, if not, don't worry. On this episode, we talked to Sean Hill from Nice Job, and he told us every single thing you need to know about reputation marketing and how you can use it to get the reputation you deserve. Let's jump right into it. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Holly and I'm here today with Sean Hill and I'm so excited he's here uh, representing Nice Job and he is gonna teach us all about reputation marketing. And typically I do a bit of an intro, but I know Nice Job is so big on their people and the people behind the brand and the faces behind the brand. So I want Sean to tell us a little bit about himself. So Sean, welcome. And could you tell us uh, your story? Absolutely. And and thank you so much for having not just Nice Job, but myself uh, on here. Uh, I'm really excited for the opportunity to get to talk to everybody, but I'm the community director at Nice Job. So what exactly that means uh, is I'm in charge of speaking to not only uh, external audiences, so people that may not know about Nice Job, uh, such as some people watching this, um, but also our internal audience as well. So building our community. Nice Job's sort of mission, if you want to say that, I know it's a very buzzword sort of uh, line there is we want to make business owners better. And the reason that is, is because if everyone is thriving, and everyone is doing well, well, yeah, it'll probably help us as a software company, you know, one of the leaders in reputation marketing. Um, but ultimately, uh, we were founded on, uh, our founder, Lars Christensen, saw that a lot of people, the bigger companies, the, the, the big markets, they could just throw money at problems and kind of start outpacing, outranking. And great companies weren't getting the reputation they deserve. And that's what we built a nice job around, is we wanted it to be easy to use, uh, simple uh, explanation of, of how to get the goals that you want to get to, but to be powerful and robust enough that it's going to allow you to expand, grow, and like I said, get the reputation you deserve. Uh, so I'm excited to be here to kind of go through the ins and outs and really talk about reputation marketing, which is an emerging field uh, and sort of an evolution of the reputation game. Nice. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Um, so without further ado, I think I'll, uh, I'll let you jump into it. Awesome. Yeah. Holly, well, first I got to ask you, uh, yeah. I, you called us reputation marketing. How familiar are you with yeah. that term? And it's not, a, it's not a trap question. I'm just, I'm generally familiar with what you would think that would be when you hear reputation marketing. Reputation marketing, in my mind, instantly I jump to uh, using social proof as leverage in your marketing campaigns. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's okay. pretty much spot on. So reputation marketing is actually, it's uh, it's an emerging field, but it kind of combines brand marketing and reputation management. So okay. nice job kind of in its infancy uh, was always reputation marketing focus. It just didn't have a full definition. Um, so reputation management, which a lot of people know, and there's a, a good amount of companies out there, is about collecting reviews, getting that social proof that you talked about. But just collecting them, you know, trying to get five stars, that's only one part of it. It's really not going to help you grow as fast as you want. You have to combine it with your marketing, but you also need to combine it with your company culture. You need to combine it with your core values. Um, and you really need to make it simple and automate it because you can spend a ton of time in there. Um, if you know anyone that's going to be graduating college or university in the next little bit, they will have such a specialized degree. Now, they do that because the colleges make more money that way. But they also do that because all these little nuances are becoming so important, especially as the world becomes more digital uh, and also as the world seems to kind of start pacing a bit quicker. And the larger the world gets, the more we start to look at our friends and neighbors. Um, oddly enough, in 2020, um, when we all, you know, had these health restrictions and we all were, you know, kind of forced to, for the good of the world, really go back into our homes and really stay close knit and tight. You saw social proof exponentially get more important. Um, you know, I used to title this, and I'm going to share uh, my screen for a second here, is I used to title uh, what I would like to talk about as, uh, you know, it was reputation and winning the review game. Uh, and it was about like winning sales, right? So it was like get review and win yeah. sales. And the main crux of that came because everyone is looking online to find businesses. Even if they're still going to pick up the phone and call you, even if they're going to stop by your storefront, chances are even through word of mouth, they're going to pop up on their phone and give you a click look. Um, as you see with the stat there, 33% are looking every single day. Um, so when it comes to winning the review game, it has to start with a great customer experience, right? No one's going to say good things yep. about you if it's a bad experience. Like when I showed up mm -hmm. here today, Holly, if I showed up and you were kind of like, hey, sorry, I'll get you in a second and you guys didn't welcome me in and make me feel great, 
my whole thought of this whole thing be like, well, maybe not a maybe not a five star series here. Maybe uh, you know, <laughs> three star. No, e- exactly right. And then not even me, you would have a bad experience about, but our, our company in general, right? It it put that kind of notion into your mind, which isn't great. Yeah, and so it all comes down to the the, the customer experience part and how that plays yeah. into reputation marketing. I talked about being part of your core values is. You have to strive for excellence. You have to be going out and not doing five-star work. Not a miss uh, misspeaking there. You have to do eight-star work. You have to do ten-star work. You have to do twelve-star yes. work. And the reason yeah, you have it. to do that is maybe it's not possible, but you want to set the expectations that it's going to be the top of the customer expectation. Holly, do you really know the number one reason why people get bad reviews? Tell me. I don't think I do. It's because you fail to meet expectations. Doesn't mean the expectations are realistic or not realistic. If I hire you to come mow my lawn and I'm like, I expect every blade of grass to be the exact same size. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to use this laser and all this stuff. I want to measure. And if every blade of grass, I want to be, you know, 2.5 inches. That's my expectation. Well, if you have one that's three, I'm going to go four star, right? Well, why do I have that expectation? You know, because maybe your tagline is, you'll get the exact lawn you want, right? And that's the exact lawn I want. So if my expectations are too high, that might lead to a bad review. So we talk about the customer experience. It's all about educating. It's all about letting them know what you're going to bring, who you are, what you're about, and to set up this sort of culture of, hey, at the end of this, we want to ask you what you think. We hope that it's a five-star service. And it's not, we want you to let you know. But if it is, we want to make it easy for you to kind of let everybody know. And then you ask everybody. And that's what Nice Job does, right? So if you want to ask for a review, if and and that's ultimately what it comes down to. That's the first start of reputation marketing is is getting more reviews before you even start sharing them out. If you want to do that, you got to ask them at the moment of peak excitement. And the moment of peak excitement is that moment, like the unveiling. If you ever watch the... uh, reality shows. You don't have to admit it, Holly. We, no one likes to admit they watch reality shows. If you ever watch it, we're like, <laughs> I'll admit it. it. Listen, Sean, I'm not in denial. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, you know, so, yeah. from everything from, you know, Great British Break Off to Say Yes to the Dress to all the home improvement shows. You're speaking my language. Yep. <laughs> yeah. There's always that moment where it's like, oh, that's when you want to ask. And okay. you want to make sure that you're not just asking in a generic sort of way. You're asking yeah. in a way that makes sense for the time being. So what we do at Nice Job is make it really easy and we start with a text message, an SMS message. And the reason we do that is because usually at the end of a job, things like that, there's two types of people. There's the extroverts that will be listening like, yeah, cool, you did all this. Yeah, this looks great. And they are so focused. Saying. But then there's the other side of it that's going to do the like, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, all right. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, looks great. Looks great. Right. So if you can pop a text message on their phone and say, hey, we really appreciate your time here. We're done for today. Uh, you know, if you can leave us a review, just click this link right here. And when they click that yeah. link, it's going to open up options for them. And nice job is going to ensure and take a look. Do they have a Facebook account? You know, can we determine they have a Facebook account? Can we determine that they have Gmail? Um, those two things right off the top, I'll say, because if they don't have a Gmail, it's going to be really hard for them. So put a lot of barriers in the way of them leaving a Google review. So perhaps that's not the best avenue to send them towards. So perhaps they'll say, would you like to leave a Facebook review? You can also leave Google and other stuff. There's always going to be options displayed to them. You're putting the power in it. So it's making it easy for them. So now you've taken away two barriers when it comes to bad reviews is one, you've set the expectations properly and you have your team ready to meet those. And the second part is, is that you're not like, hey, would you like to leave me a review? Follow this link and it might make you log in and then you have to do that. Then you have to remember that dingus password that you always forget and you reset it. Like how many times have you actually reset that password? That whole thing, <laughs> other system. <laughs> exactly, no, I totally agree. Now let's circle back to like the peak moment, like the peak excitement. Can you give me an example? Um, of, of that moment in, in a contractor's work day or relationship with that, with that homeowner? Yeah. So usually it's, it's when, when jobs complete it, right? That's, okay. that's when we ultimately w- would say, it. you know, for, with most CRM integrations, you actually can automatically trigger a nice job. Um, you know, when yes. you do a, a job completed or a job finished, um, some yes. people send it out when the invoice gets sent, but perhaps when the invoice gets paid and it sounds weird to say like, well, wait, Paying doesn't really sound like the moment of peak excitement. However, mm-hmm. that's when you, you're really putting your value to work, right? So you're saying, this is what we did. We hope it's a fair price. We want the whole experience. Because again, if the expectation is that this should cost less, you want to know that because either A, you haven't explained fully why it took two hours or why it cost this much. Um, or you, you know, 
you, you, you're kind of completing the whole process. You're saying, Hey, like we're going our way. Can't wait to come back soon. Um, so the moment of peak excitement is always at the job completion. Now in your particular industry, say you are, uh, you're, you're visiting a couple of times, you know, it's recurring business. Um, or perhaps it's, you know, we do part one, a couple of months, we come back and do part two. You can kind of decide among your industry when that might be the moment of peak excitement. But we usually say job end because it's, it's the job complete that you, if you're a problem solver, which most home service businesses are, you just solve the problem, get them right there. But the moment exactly. of Exactly. It's kind of your hero moment, right? Yeah. So the moment of yeah. peak excitement, that, that hero moment you just said, perfect phrasing, going to steal forever. Thanks, Holly. Um, <laughs> no problem. Is, is the first time you should touch them, right? The first time you should mm-hmm. ask for it. Because 50% of people is the latest that we say. 50% of it, uh, of people that you interact with, need multiple invites before they'll actually leave a review. And Holly, do you have any idea why, why that would be the case? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Of course. Yeah. We call it there a tease. Because life gets in the way, right? Even that text message exactly. right now, Right? So you send, me, you, yeah. you send me a text right now. You say like, Sean, love the plaid shirt. You know, let's go out for a drink sometime. Something like that. I look at it and I go, oh, okay. Yeah, great. And then my dog knocks something over, right? Or, or, or I get another yes. text message from my buddy. It says like, dude, are you watching this right now? And I forget yeah. to click through. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I want to review our, our, the show we did here. I want to talk about, you know, the experience I had coming on, you know, the Contractor Academy here. I, I want to shout it from the rooftops, but life got in the way. So that's why Nice Job will always follow up with a text message with up to three emails. And I say up to three emails because there's nothing worse than doing something and being asked to do it again, right? Like yeah. the classic mom, like clean your room. I did it. You didn't go check it. I did it. <laughs> Um, and that's why we follow up and each follow up, each email that comes through has a slightly different tone. We find that the most effective ones are that first text message, the moment of peak excitement, and actually the last one, that, that third email, that fourth touch point, because the last one, we change the tone. Um, we provide copy for you. Everything is customizable. So you always can put it in your voice. You always can make it what you want to be. But our recommendation, what we found works the best is have different tones throughout. So the first one is, Hey, we're done. You're happy. We're happy. Five stars. Let's go. Tone number two is like, hey, you know, we think it's the way. I just want to make sure you're kind of happy. We want to make sure nothing between now and then, you know, change, things like that. So let us know. We'd love to hear about it. And here's even leave a review. The third one is, I know things get lost in translation. Don't worry. Like, it's all good things like that. But then the fourth one is, hey, it's me, the owner. You know, you can change it to the manager. You, you can have it say like that. It's like, just want to thank you again. You know, we really appreciate it. We look forward to serving you. Like, you know, we're, we're not necessarily going to ask again, but just reminding you. Because you can get other moments of peak excitement, right? And it's kind of like you get the birthday gift and you open it and you love it on day one and you wear it, but then or you wear that t-shirt you just got. But then the next time it comes to the laundry, you see it again, it's like, oh yeah, like, oh man, that's so cool. So think about, you know, again, I'll just use landscapers as an example. You go, you mow the lawn, it looks beautiful. But then that first time they have the barbecue, they're reminded of how cool it looks. And the first time the neighbor goes like, oh, hey, Doug, it's pretty good. That's again, so that's, that's yes. what those multiple touch points are about. Um, and within nice job, you can see, um, you know, what, when emails are being opened, uh, you'll get to see the kind of conversion rate there and things like that. Um, so that's the reputation management part. But now, as you mentioned, Holly, on the top, it's reputation marketing. So what are we doing yeah. now? I have all the social proof. I have all these people, you know, five stars across the board. Right. And I want to let people know. So that's where nice job helps you with uh, reputation marketing tools. So things like social media automation. So if you get a review on Google, um, you can set something, anything that's four or five stars or above, share it to my Facebook page. That'll automatically be shared, increase the engagement on that way. You can share it to your Twitter account. You can share it to, to LinkedIn, immediately going out it. So now you're taking a Google review and you're getting it out on more places. And I want to be clear just for confusion is if you're using a software that says that someone can type in one thing and it'll post everywhere, that might get you in trouble with some review softwares. Now, within Nice Job, once a client leaves a review, they say, hey, do you want to leave another one? It can be directed that way. But with this social sharing element, it makes new user-generated content. And that is something that search engines love. That's something that social media platforms love. So you're going to be feeding that beast. You're going to constantly be giving it new user-generated content uh, through your reviews, through your photos. I can't believe I skipped over. You can add photos to your review requests. uh, and, And that goes in there. So now you have this big visual platform. We also have widgets for your website, right? And one I want to talk about in particular is Engage. And the reason I'm talking about it is it's absolutely free. If you don't use Nice Job right now, you can go sign up, get the Engage widget, 
put it on your website and it's going to increase the conversion rate on your website. And for those that may not know, it's okay. You don't have to ask. Conversion rate is the amount of people that are coming to your website. They're taking an action, right? Clicking to book, want to learn more, you know, interacting with you. When you up that conversion rate, that's upping your leads and sales straight off the bat. And what the real time social proof does is you have the ability to actually see a full customer journey right on the website. So it, certain CRMs will also send booking information for the Engage widget. So I can see like Holly booked four days ago. Then the next thing comes up and it says Holly left a five-star review. That's a whole customer journey right there. That's the best social proof possible. I saw from booking the five-star straight through. And, uh, you know, with, with a lot of that automation, again, it's set it in, forget it in some regards. But if you want to dive in and really get into it, you can, you know, add additional photos. You can add commentary. Um, getting that social proof out and expanding really makes it that your customers kind of turn into a fan base. I come from sports. That's where my career started. Um, I created mascots. I took 70,000 people, got them on their feet, cheering, standing, things like that. I was shooting t-shirts, all that fun, goofy stuff. But what I was doing was giving fans a voice, making passionate people more passionate. And that's what you can do, not just with nice job, but if you start getting reputation marketing, you start building into your culture and things like that, you may not have neighbors painting their face talking about your company, but I guarantee they'll tell all their friends and family. And I guarantee that they'll become a part of your marketing team. Exactly. Yes, I love that. I think Company Cam says it so perfectly. They try to create raving fans. And I love it. It's just it's exactly what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the raving fans is always a really fun term for me. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, raving fans, you kind of think of the overpassionate big fans is you want to create a fan base. You want raving fans. People are going to shout from the rooftops. But you also want people, I call them like the defenders. Where if you think in the sports realm, like in the bar, we're like, okay, they're not overly going, but start talking trash on that team and watch how quickly they step up. Is you want to get the person when they're talking to their brother in law and they just go, look, just I'm telling you, these guys are great for me, you know? So maybe they're not telling everyone they know. They're not walking around, like I said, handing out your business card. But by leaving a five star review, they're kind of putting a cherry on a Sunday. And then you're able to put that Sunday out on display and everyone that has a sweet tooth is now looking for it. And again, with bringing that sort of social proof into your social media and into your website means no matter where they're finding your business. So if they're talking, like we said at the top of the show, in a conversation, and they say, oh, check out so-and-so, and they go and they just quickly look it up. The fact that they're not going to find the website, not just the website, but they're going to see your social media pages, and they're going to see all this talk about you, it kind of creates a little bit of buzz. You know, there's a little bit of the psychology of social proof is that when people hear a lot about something, they're going to go one or two ways. They're going to get a little oppositional defiant and be like, no, I'm hipster. I'm not doing that. You know, that's not a knock on hipster. Are you talking about me, Sean? I'm not. Is that, is that, is that your style, right? No, I'm kidding. No, no, we're all good. It's good. So, but like I was saying is that there are people who do that. Well, guess what? Yeah, of course. Eventually, though, there's right and wrong, correct? Yeah. So you can say, like, I don't want to do it because it's popular, but... I see the photos and they do really good work and I see all the happiness and I can tell that I'm not going to waste my money. I'm going to get my problem solved. So you now have, uh, I guess, a, you know, a, a way to fight that, combat that behavior. But the other thing you're going to get, you're going to people go, you know what? If everyone's talking about it. I got to try it. And now what you got there is an audition. And if you get out there and you're able to put it on there, I guarantee everyone listening to this is confident about their business is going to say, yeah, that's all I need. Just give me a chance to go out there and show what I can do. My 20 years of experience, all the knowledge I have, the nights I stayed up thinking about how to make my business better, I'm going to get a chance to show that. Oh, sign me up. And that's why reputation marketing is the future. If you're just doing you're leaving something on the table. If you're just doing brand marketing, you're not really getting the full picture. By going to reputation marketing, using something like Nice Job, it's going to be quick, simple, and, and give you the tools you need that if you want to set it and forget it, you're going to be effective. And if you want to dive into all the nuances and use it to the best of your ability, uh, you, you're going to get even more out of it. And that's why we're passionate about it. And I, I, you know, I know a couple of these episodes, you get really deep dives into, you know, kind of the, the tech and the app and things like that. I don't have to go too deep in the nice job because it's built by people for people. And it's built with the goal in mind that, hey, we want to give you something that's simple to use and highly effective. So let's spend less time, you know, worrying about all these sort of nuances and give you something that you can get in your hands, you can use and start seeing results. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yes, I love that. It's perfect. 
Let's circle back and talk to me more about this psychology. I think this is a lot, this is a, a key factor a lot of people miss, especially a lot of contractors. Um, so tell me more about how that works. Just almost the followers that you see when, when you get those early adopters of, of X tech and then everyone else all of a sudden, you know, so talk to me more about that. So the thing about the psychology um, when it comes to, to reputation, right, is I kind of alluded to a little bit before. There's a little bit of a prove it to me attitude and there's a little bit of a trust attitude. So let's just focusing on the trust attitude is people want to know at the very least that they're not making a wrong uh, analysis, right? So there might be a little bit of fear of wrong decision. They don't make a wrong analysis. Um, it's kind of an out clause if someone says like, well, I don't know, they had great reviews. And that sounds like a weird thing to say to, to contractors, things like that. But again, you just want your shot. You know you're good at this. You just want your shot. This gives you the opportunity, social proof, allows you to say like, you know what? Enough people have tried it that I am either A, going to look smart because I now will also have five-star work. Or I may, in my own mind, think that I'm smarter because I go, why is everyone raving about this place? You know, think about someone like, Holly, it's the best pizza you ever had. And you go try it and you're like, this is like a, a hotter Lunchable. This is terrible, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so you go and you say, you know what? Maybe, am I Am I a pizza connoisseur? Like all these people are raving about this, but like I thought it wasn't that good. Like am I? I could be a pizza genius. And I put that little humor in it because that's how the psychology works, right? The psychology works that people want to know what their friends and neighbors are doing. They want to know what's around them because they want to feel the safety in making a decision. And even if they, you are thinking of, all right, what about the customer that wants to be cutting edge, that wants to be you know, on the front, right? Well, one, they need to find you. You know, if someone still wants to get out there, you don't have any reviews on there. You don't have a website that's actually converting customers. It's just, you know, like a flyer that instead of being on a light pole, it's on a, on the internet. If, if you don't have those things at hand, then no one's going to find you. You know, it's the same thing if you're the band that's trying to make it, but you're only playing in your dad's basement. Well, no one's going to find you. You got to go out and get in a park. You got to go and play in a supermarket where no one should have a concert. But guess what? Someone sees you there. So the, the psychology around social proof is, is that it's an okay to investigate. It's an okay to make a decision. And really, it's providing this safety and security that someone knows that they are making the right decision. For whatever reason they think they're, they got to that conclusion, they're making the right decision. So if they like your look, they like your price, they like your style, whatever the reason that they start finding an affinity towards you, that social proof makes it okay for them to click book now. Nice. I love that. Very well said, Sean. Perfect. Now I have a hot topic question for you. How do you feel? What are your thoughts on review gating? So tell us a little bit about that in your opinion. Yeah. So review gating, first of all, is going to get you in big trouble with Google. So if you're doing mm -hmm. any sort of review gating. Uh, for those who are not familiar, review gating in the sense is uh, you're kind of asking for feedback before allowing them to leave the review. Now, there are ways to do that, right? You can give surveys, you can ask feedback, but what you never want to do is try to hide negative reviews or, or try to, to redirect. And what I mean by that is, is that if you get to what should be that moment of peak excitement and the person doesn't look happy, don't ask them for a review. Ask them how you can make it right you know, start the feedback, uh, you know, service there. Um, but a lot of companies you'll see go out there and they'll say like, oh, well, we send them a survey and they say seven or above, then we send them to leave a review. And if they say six and below, we just send it to your inbox. Um, that is kind of bad policy, uh, you know, from the, from the actual, you know, terms and conditions stands for things like Google. Um, but ultimately, I, I don't get the net benefit for your company in that sense, right? Um, again, it's like, oh, well, we don't get bad publicity out there. But that's when it goes back of talking about with, if you have an easy system to gather reviews, if you can get, we were talking to someone the other day as an HVAC company, they got 60 reviews out of his first 62 clients, right? So if one of those was bad, it's, you know, one to 59, okay, that's, that's a great ratio there. And we've all heard of the people that are like, oh, well, I go, I go, here's what I do. This is my trick, Nancy, is I go and I look at the top three reviews and the worst three reviews. Well, you have no bad reviews, right? You have 20 reviews and they're all five star. It falls into that, uh, the uncanny valley where they talk about like with CGI when, when, when things in movies start looking too real. 
If something looks too perfect, going back to that psychology is people don't quite trust it. But if you have a one-star review on there and you're able to add a reply, and you can do that right within Nice Job. You can re- reply, you know, uh, you know, to Google reviews. You can type your response right there. And you should reply to every single review you get. Um, if you can reply and show, all right, here's how we handle problems, that goes back to that safety of now I feel less risky hitting book now because if I hate it, I just saw now that one, they're willing to take it on the chin and say, yeah, you know what? Let's make it right. But then they did make it right. The best review you can get is when someone goes, I edited my three-star review and here's why it's now five. Or I edited my one star review. And honestly, here how it is three. We just gave away, we had our award show uh, in March, uh, and we gave away something called our Business to Watch Award. And what it was is based on the data we have, people that improved their rating overall. Those are the companies that are going to end up being our other award winners later, our best service award winners, because they took control of their company, they took control of their reputation, and they put it out there. It says, hey, we're not coming here telling you we are going to do this, tell you it's right, then walk away. We're here to solve your problems and we're here to kind of help you out. So if you're review gating, I get the appeal of it. I don't want negative publicity to go out there. But again, a lot of times bad reviews just come from not meeting expectations. So it's good to find that out. But it also is great to say, you know, not in a combative sort of way of, you know, I apologize that that we weren't able to, you know, explain A, B or C. And then we'd love to make it right. You know, would you have an opportunity? Having that out there, is is really great. Anyone that's ever been, you know, dating recently and was like, I kind of like that person. And then like the server did this and they kind of lost their mind. And I was like, okay, that happens. That's kind of what review gating is trying to almost like if you could hit pause and rewind. And that's why it's so important. But chances are it's going to get you in trouble. And chances are it's going to end up making your company culture not one that strives for success, but just to strives not to look bad. And if that's what you're in business for, okay. But you want to, if, if your big thing is how you look, then I don't know, you probably have overly fancy uniforms. So that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. I think overall, it's just humanizing the experience. And like you said earlier, it's people to people. And sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we're not perfect. And, and that's life. And you own up to it. And you just have conversations with people instead of, you know, getting offended, letting it get to your ego or whatnot. So. And you can make it really useful for yourself. You know, within yeah. NiceShot, we also have our employee leaderboard. So you can tell if you're asking for all reviews across the board and not review gating them and not, and not trying to filter all the bad things, you can quickly find out who on your team is on those three-star jobs. You know, you also can reward the people, promote the people. You know, if you're doing performance pay, uh, you can have that tracked right within nice jobs. So you can find out who's getting what reviews, who's on what jobs. And that's the feedback you're actually looking for. So don't be afraid of a bad review getting through because setting up yourself to get better reviews comes down to the steps we talked about prior. But if a bad one gets in there, again, it's another opportunity to show what you're really about. You know, there's a reason that almost every Disney movie has a part where the main character is doing really, really bad <laughs> because people love a comeback story. And guess what? You can yes. be great and have a comeback story. You can be a top business in your industry. You know, you can be the competitor that everyone else fears out there and have a one or two star review in there. Because that is a full complement of story instead of someone that's doing review gating, trying all these sneaky, greasy things just to make themselves look pretty. Yes, I love it. I feel like I could shout it from the rooftops. Don't be afraid of bad reviews. It's an opportunity. I love it. Um, super. So thank you, Sean. Now tell me, how can people find out more information about Nice Job? Yeah, so a couple of variety of different ways. Uh, first, I'd recommend is going to our website, get.nicejob.co. Um, just.co. We're trying to think of a witty thing like the M is because it's the money you save, so you keep it, but we don't have that yet. Just.co. Um, but I, I would also say within there, you can find our, our, our demo page. Uh, you also can check us out on YouTube where the Nice Job podcast is hosted. Um, that's where you a little bit learn a bit more about our kind of our, our thought leadership angle. Um, but yeah, but going to our website, get.nicejob.co, um, navigating to our demo page, just scrolling through there, um, you'll find out everything. And also, you can also just send us a message. Um, you can email me, sean at nicejob.co, uh, spelled correctly, S-H-A-W-N. I love that. Now, one final question for you. What is the biggest piece of advice you can give to people looking to kind of up their review reputation game. So I'll keep it very, very brief because as you saw in earlier, I'm very long-winded. Uh, yeah, it's it's make it simple for the consumer. 
make it a part of your company culture, excuse me. So have your techs realize why it's important to gather reviews, how it actually helps them to get feedback, um, and then call your shot at the beginning and make it easy at the end. The easier you make it at the end for them to leave a review where they want, and the easier it is for you to share that out and build that social proof cloud, that's how you'll start you know, rolling in reviews. But you gotta be ready for it. You, you can't, like I said, we talked about review getting at some point, you, you can't, not you can't fear you have to go get reviews from every single one of your customers and if you make it easy you're going to start seeing two to three times more reviews especially if you're using nice job super awesome okay thank you so much son i really appreciate you coming on here and telling us more about a nice job uh for those listening make sure you like subscribe and hit that notification button so you can stay notified for new content we put out um thank you again have a good day